good day and welcome back. Well, I've been a fan of thermal typewriters for quite a few years, ever since my friend Ted Monk first showed me his brother EP20. This is a brother EP43. This is a thermal typewriter and it's actually the second EP43 in my collection. This one belonged to my friend Kevin and it was missing when he got it. It was missing the platinum knob, the battery cover, and it had some keyboard issues. Well, Kevin was crafty enough to make his own makeshift battery cover that keeps the batteries intact, which was really cool. I worked on the keyboard. I took the machine apart. I cleaned some contacts around the space bar. I adjusted the spring tension on the space bar spring, got the keyboard working, but it was still missing the platinum knob, which is really useful for initially for feeding the paper in and out of the machine. So yesterday I was over at my friend Ethan's and we decided to look into 3D printing a replacement platen knob. Stay tuned. So this is the knob that comes with EP43 and so Ethan has been designing a replacement knob and we are currently printing it in red PLA right now. So it's going to be fun. Hopefully we'll have a working replacement knob for an EP43. We'll make the files available online for you so that we can uh, share them with you if you guys want to print your own, if you're missing a knob. I think these are common. Either get knocked off or they break. They're kind of fragile. Well, this is the Brother EP43. I have two of these. So there's a couple condition issues with this machine. First of all, it's missing the platen knob. So as you may know, on the EP43, it only has a left platen knob, but it's missing. And also, um, the battery cover was missing, and Kevin was crafty enough to fashion a cardboard battery holder that holds the batteries in place, and that actually worked for him quite well. And this is what we came up with. I chose red PLA filament. We have a nice knurled rim to touch to turn the knob. We used uh, a rather high density of printing to make the knob strong, and it has one of these semicircular holes uh, for the shaft. It took us a couple iterations to get this hole to the right size. Okay, so here is the platen knob shaft, and you can see it's one of these semicircular shafts. So we have the knob here, we line up the shaft, knob goes on quite easily, and it really works pretty darn good. In fact, I would almost say I like this knob better than the original knob. So here is the uh, original knob that came on the EP43 on the first one that I had. It also has some knurling along the rim that you can see. And then our new one here. Yeah, I actually like the knurling on the new knob here better than the original one. And it's a little bit more solid, actually. There's a little bit more plastic in it. And also, of course, you get the option of printing whatever color you want. So I kind of opted on this initial one to use red because it kind of matches the red uh, calculator button on the keyboard which I think is a nice little highlight. So we did print an initial version of the knob and the hole was just a little bit too big. I think uh, we had to move the flat a little bit closer into the middle of the hole to make it tighter and maybe shrink up the hole slightly. Also on this initial one we didn't put any knurling on the rim of the uh, knob but the current design works fine. The size of the hole when you're printing with a thermoplastic can get a little tighter than what you want based on the settings of your individual 3D printer and also the slicing software that creates the binary file and also the kind of filament you're using. So the dimensions that I've included in this file are for this particular setup that we have. So if you want to make your own knob for your own EP43 typewriter, start off with that file that I'm going to provide down below, but you may have to adjust the size of this hole or the position of the flat on the hole to get it to match the shaft of the platen properly. Well, I've said this before that I really think an update to the 
thermal typewriter would be a great product. If you could have a printing mechanism that's portable, battery operated, and works with a dedicated word processor with a tactile mechanical like keyboard, it would be a great product, I think. And there'd be a lot of happy writers and typists with such a device. But in the meantime, we have to keep these old 1980s things working. Well, thermal typewriters came out in the mid-1980s, and they lasted for a few years. They were kind of a more mobile, lighter, portable version of a daisy wheel typewriter. But instead of using a round print wheel, they have a thermal print head. And originally what they did is they used a carbon film cassette ribbon goes in the machine, and the thermal print head transfers the film in the ribbon onto normal paper. Well, they haven't made these cartridges in a long while. There are some new old stock available online, and I'm lucky to have a few of them. But when I'm using these thermal typewriters, I'm not using the original cassettes because they're very rare. I'm actually using them with thermal paper directly in the machine without a ribbon cassette. I happen to have some packs of Brother letter size thermal paper, and also you can use rolls of fax paper or even narrower kinds of thermal paper that are used for printing receipts or even four by six shipping label kind of thermal paper. Any kind of thermal paper, even EKG paper works on these machines. Well, I really like the thermal typewriters for several reasons. First of all, they're very portable and lightweight, and they're all battery-powered, so you can take them with you places, and they're very quiet. They don't use an impact method of printing. That's why I like them. Of course, the thermal printing paper medium won't be as archival as standard paper, but you can also scan your thermal typings or OCR them into a digital file if you wish to do that also. There's a lot of options available with thermal typewriters. One thing also I like about them is most of them have an LCD screen that buffers the text as you type through the screen. In this case, many of them are like 15 characters wide. If you catch a, a typographical error or mistake in the screen before it gets printed, you can correct it and not have an error. And that's kind of a nice feature as well. Well, I really liked being able to replace the knob on this typewriter and actually being able to customize the color. I chose this red color to go with this little calculator button, but also a light blue would have worked to match the uh, blue keys here. So there's a lot of color options when you're making your own 3D printed knobs, and that's one of the things I like about keeping these machines alive. Well, we have not yet tackled the problem of the battery cover underneath there. I did make a sketch today that uh, took all the dimensions of the battery cover and it's going to be a very complicated 3D CAD file to design a cover that can be 3D printed, but I'm going to be working on that in the next few weeks and hopefully give you an update when I have some results. But in any case, I wish you the very best in creativity, whether you're doing it by hand or on a typewriter of some sort. Stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.